Welcome to Reflect on This. Hello, I am Johnny Henshaw. This is the podcast version of devotionals I send to my family and friends. In these devotionals, I share the things I'm learning about the ways and nature of God through applying my study of the scriptures to the world around me. And don't forget to keep listening at the conclusion of today's episode to hear about my recommended resources, such as podcasts that I find helpful and encouraging, books that inspired some of these episodes, and ministries that I want you to know about. So let's get started. Please join me today as we reflect on this. Well, it is the beginning of a new year, and a time when many of us have good intentions to spend some time seeking God's guidance for the year ahead. But to be honest, I often do not turn my good intentions into actual action in this area. This year, however, I did, and I wanted to share with you some tips I discovered in doing so. Trust me, it is never too late in the year to do this activity. What am I talking about? Setting aside special time with the Lord, seeking His guidance for the new year. It could be an hour, a morning, or even a day. The duration is not as important as the action of getting alone and spending focused time with God. This is a time to diligently seek the Lord's guidance for the coming year. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Jeremiah 29.13, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 33.3, Call to me and I will answer you, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Use your journal, notes, and calendar from the past year to help you in the following steps. Write down notes in your journal as you go through this process. Don't have a journal? Well, consider starting. It doesn't have to be elaborate or overly detailed. It can be a note on your phone or use the new journal app on iPhones. It could be a file on your computer or a paper journal. Whatever the format, the important thing is to take notes during this process. I wrote down notes using the following outline, and I encourage you to do the same. So let's get started as we press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The following consists of two major sections. The first is reflecting on the past year, and the second is reflecting on the new year. Reflecting on the past year, step one, successes growth, and fun. Write these down as an encouragement. Number two, failures as reminders of your dependence on God. Number three, lessons learned as reminders of opportunities for continued growth and maturity. Number four, examples of God's faithfulness in the past year. Look back and appreciate all that God has done for you in the past. We often do not detect God's faithfulness to us in the present moment. But if we take time to look back, we can see, with the 2020 vision of hindsight, that God brought many blessings that we did not notice or did not attribute to Him. In many cases, as we reflect upon past situations, we also see that God brought good out of our challenging situations or that in our disappointments, God was actually protecting us from misguided goals or desires that would, in fact, have been harmful to us if they were realized. Now reflect on the new year. Number one, current challenges. The triune Godhead upholds and sustains all life, including yours. God will sustain you through the challenges you are facing in the present. Hebrews 1.3, using amplifications on the Greek words of the text and the context of the chapter, reads like this, And Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation and expression and imprint of His nature. And Jesus upholds all things individually and collectively, including me, 
by the mere utterance of the word of his miraculous power and force. Remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number two, needs. Armed with the assurance of God's faithfulness to us in the past, it helps us to then look to the future with confidence that He will continue to guide and protect us, keeping our ultimate best interests in mind. So list your needs and ask God for provision to meet those needs in the coming year. Psalm 3410 says, The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Number three, wants. You are a child of God. Do not be shy of asking your Heavenly Father to fulfill your wants. He knows what is good for you and will respond accordingly. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Psalm 8411, For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will uphold no good thing from those who do what is right. Number three, goals. Ask God to help you formulate some goals for this year and write them down based on what God is putting on your heart during this time with Him. They may be related to activities associated with ministry, family, work, or even personal growth and fun. Philippians 3.14, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. And now a comment about people versus projects. During this process of formulating goals, remember, our relationships with people are more important than completing our task list. Never put projects ahead of people. Number five, dreams. This is the time that you stop and share with God your wildest dreams, dreams that may take days, months, or even years to come to fruition. It is okay and even good to do so. Don't worry, God is not threatened by your dreams, nor does He want to discourage you from dreaming. He is your Heavenly Father. He may have actually put some of those dreams in your heart. He will guide you in the days, months, and years ahead to show you which ones are from Him and which ones are not helpful to pursue. And by the way, this podcast is one of my dreams. Psalm 37, 4-5 says, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will act. Psalm 20, verse 4 May He give you what your heart desires and fulfill your whole purpose. This process really helped me to get a better focus on what I need to be doing in 2024. I challenge you to get alone with God early in this new year and see if this process will help you as well. Today, I encourage you to reflect on this. Today's featured resource is is the Bible Study Software Package entitled eSword. This free Bible Study software is available for download to a wide range of computers and mobile devices, including Windows and Mac computers, and Apple and Android tablets and phones. The download includes several free public domain resources, including Bibles, dictionaries, commentaries, devotionals, and maps. You can then download from within the eSword program many more free public domain resources. You can optionally purchase whatever copyrighted resources you want to create a powerful study library. One of the greatest benefits of Bible study with this software is the multi-window display so that you can simultaneously have windows open to a Bible translation, a dictionary, and a commentary. They are automatically linked so that if you select a verse, then the corresponding entry in the selected dictionary and commentary are displayed. You can also easily compare Bible translations by viewing them in parallel windows. For the Bible translations that have embedded Strong's numbers, 
referencing the corresponding Hebrew or Greek word, you can hover over a Strong's number and a tooltip pops up with the Strong's definition for that word. To learn more and to get a free download of this amazing study tool, on your computer, go to esword.net. That's e-sword.net. On your mobile device, go to your app store and search for e-sword. That's e-sword.